This is Learn It From An 80 Song. I am your coach, Patricia Freiberg. Today, we have a very special guest. Please welcome Sean Ruff. Sean Ruff is a fitness and fat loss expert. He also teaches physical education to children in the school system. Sean's mission is to help people lose fat using evidence-based fitness and nutrition methodologies. Welcome, Sean. It's so great to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you so much for getting up so early. I know uh, it's 6 a.m. your time in California, uh, and it's definitely nine hours difference uh, here in Switzerland. So thanks for starting uh, your day on Learned It From An 80s Song. Thank you. So um, this is the part of the show where we have the big reveal as to what song you selected for your story that you're going to share with us. So without further ado, Sean, what is the song that best resonates with the story you're going to tell us today? Can I get a drum roll, please? <laughs> what is your song? Uh, Beat It by Michael Jackson. Oh exceptional song really great yeah. choice um and i can't wait to hear how this resonates with your story uh beat it's 1983 it I came out so, yeah yeah february 14th it came out on valentine's day oh wow i that i didn't know yes i didn't either i remember when it came out though um uh and that's uh michael jackson and quincy jones produced that um uh that album it's the through off the thriller album uh 1982 thriller came out um and the guitar solo was eddie van halen in that as well oh, wow. yeah that as well <laughs> so cool right and it it was one of their best-selling hits um of all time as well and i think you know we anyone who knows michael jackson knows that song instantly so yeah. uh, king, king of pop, you brought it to learn it from an 80s song today. Awesome. Tell us a little bit about your, your story. Well, that song especially resonates with me uh, based on my childhood, uh, the, way I, I, the way I grew up. Um, I'll be honest, and, and some of it may be a little bit heavy. Um, I grew up in a household of abuse and drugs, mm -hmm. to be quite honest with you. So, um, you know, I always noticed that when I was listening, you know, when I was going through that, that song always seemed to be somewhere in the background. And, you know, the hook beat it just kind of really resonated with me. It was catchy. Um, and, you know, I told myself and internalized those words and said that I have to beat the adversity in the situation that I'm in and overcome it. So. That's why that song resonates for that reason, just because I, you know, it, it always seemed to be playing in the background somehow, um, or I always would keep going back to that song and that track. Um, yeah, wow. so. Yeah. Really amazing. And, um, and it sounds like this struggle uh, that you had um, early on in life, um, this song was almost an anthem, you know, to push through. It was, yeah. Um, and I know that, uh, you know, the lyrics of the song may not have really been about um, beating or overcoming adversity. I think it, it, it aligned more with someone being out of Michael's life or, you know, just beat it, you know? So, yeah. I mean, I, I drew meaning from the hook in a different way based on my personal life experience. Um, and I think we do that sometimes with music and songs. We listen to the words and... Um, and then we'll, you know, somehow find a way to make it align with what we're going through at the time or our life experience. So uh, that's what I did with that song. Amazing. And you bring up such a good point because, you know, music, and I, I mentioned this on a couple episodes back, but music is a metaphor uh, for us and it's a vehicle for us to be able to have deeper conversations. And what we oh, sure. get out of one song, because based on our life experience, 
could be completely different than the person. It will be completely different than the person next to you, you know, yeah. based yeah. on their life experience. And, um, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed this journey um, because oftentimes for me, I'm, I'm going to do a, a podcast on forgiveness coming up and I'm working on it right now. And I already have the song to talk about it so like i almost heard the song first and then i like know the story that goes with the song or sometimes i know a theme and then i can pick a song based on that so it's um you know it's just a really it's an interesting process and it's a great way to open up and um and have these discussions and also there's so much that we can't articulate through words and music gives us that place where we can uh, express ourselves. Yep, I agree 100%. And, and, and for me, that song was, that song allowed me to do that. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. So it was just. Love yeah. that. Love it. And I'd love to hear a little bit more, if you don't mind sharing, just, mm -hmm. you know, I, um, you know, with what you're doing now and how you're inspiring, you know, children. And then also, you know, your very uh, vast fitness uh, professional life. I would love to hear a little bit um, about um, that moment where you kind of persevered. I don't know if you had one moment or a time period or what have you, where you're like, this is where I'm going. This is what I want to do. Right. Um... I think I did. I mean, as a youngster, uh, during those times when, you know, I had that type of adversity in the family at home, uh, I think sports was my out. That's what was my saving grace. Um, that kind of pulled me away uh, from all the madness that was going mm -hmm. on. And, you know, I always say that that, that saved me. So being active. Being active. Um, now, in terms of pursuing a fitness lifestyle, that happened in college. I met a jazz singer. He was also a martial artist, interestingly enough. Wow. And he took me and a bunch of his other uh, kids that we had in school there under his wing, took us into the gym and kind of worked us out as a group. So before small group training was a thing, he was already doing it. Wow. Uh, he had about five of us and he worked us out. He took us through a circuit and then he always, always taught us about the importance of getting the correct fuel in our bodies to fuel our bodies for the exercise that we we're going to do. Um, I'll be honest, as a youngster back then, I got results and I got hooked on fitness. And that was what really kind of catapulted me into uh, kind of the fitness lifestyle. I eventually started working in a gym. I eventually got certified in training. And that's how I got into fitness. Wow. And I felt like I needed to kind of pay that forward. Absolutely. That's amazing. So the sports were your way of um, overcoming the adversity and staying on the mm -hmm. line of which because I know, um, or I don't know, but I can imagine, uh, I should select my words better, but I can imagine in those situations, it's when there's a lot of, of uh, drugs and, and things accessible, and it's part of a lifestyle, it's very yeah. difficult to say no all the time. And it's very difficult to continue on that straight path when there's a lot going on oh, around yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, an immense amount of distractions. I always ask myself, even to this day, sometimes I say, um, wow, um, I'm not sure how I was able to kind of get by or, or, or get past that somehow or how I didn't succumb to the environment around me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it was, you know, depending on what you believe, I mean, you know, some will call it divine intervention. I'm not sure what it was, but it was something. Yeah. Um, and maybe it was being active in sports. Yeah. What was your sport uh, choice? like? What Baseball was, your... was my first choice when I was a youngster, um, cool. you know, growing up. But I played just about anything that allowed me to be active. <laughs> yeah, so, really cool. Yeah. Well, and I love that story of the jazz musician, you know, bringing you guys all together and starting that small group training and right. you seeing the results, but then also seeing the benefit of the safety and form that's provided in small groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. So yeah. fascinating. 
So then I know, um, you know, a part of your, your brand also is, um, you know, helping with weight management and, yeah. um, and then how, tell me us a little bit about your nutrition journey and, and, um, how that's worked for you. Yeah. So, I mean, growing up as a kid in that environment, I'll be honest, um, you know, I didn't grow up with this nutrition knowledge or eating healthy. I mean, we, for the most part, we ate crap. We did. Uh, it was just what was available at the time when I was growing up. Um, you know, my family didn't really know any better, um, to be quite honest with you. So um, once I got into the fitness lifestyle, as I mentioned previously, that's when everything kind of that's when everything changed. I started becoming uh, more curious about proper nutrition to fuel my journey. And I started doing my own research and educating myself. And that's how that really changed. And again, now I'm at the point where I'm trying to pay that forward to youngsters who, you know, are at the age I was when I was going through all of these, uh, you know, all the adversity I was. So mm -hmm. um, hopefully they're getting something that I didn't get. Right. And there are even adults right now who have lived that way all their lives and they need to be educated on, you know, how to properly fuel themselves for you know, their goals or whatever activity, um, you know, they're involved with. Yes. Yes. And I love how you're talking about how to fuel your body properly and that mm -hmm. mindset of fueling your body to then do your sport. Oftentimes people have the reverse of that, uh, which I think can work against people, which is um, work out to maintain their weight versus fuel your body Correct. to work out at your best yeah and get the no. most out of your vehicle correct so food um one of the things i try to teach the people also is to uh, have the mindset that food is more functional um because most most people eat food in social settings and it becomes a social thing as opposed to it being for a function it's to fuel your body for the activity that you do mm -hmm. and, yes. and that alone. Now you can enjoy your food. There's nothing wrong with that, but um, I just think we need to adopt the mindset that, um, you know, we eat to fuel our bodies. Yes. Really, really, really interesting. Um, and I hear that more and more now, uh, mm -hmm. just that, that people shifting that mindset and the importance of that and also the importance and, um, of you know rather than depleting you know saying you know and and living in that space of depleting really it's about like what could you add right what could you add to your plate that's healthy and veg you know with vegetables yes we want to limit the white flowers and all of that you know of um and but but also it having that mindset of what could be added to make it more colorful what could be added you know um to your water to make it that you want to drink more water do you know what i'm saying like yeah, shifting that 100%. a little bit i agree you should um you know one of the other things i try to preach to people as well is you should be able to enjoy the food that you eat um, you know and a lot of folks sometimes come to me and ask me hey can you give me a diet or a meal plan and i you know, right away I tell them, well, no, I don't want to give you a meal plan. I don't know the type of foods that you enjoy. And they seem a little taken back or surprised by that. Well, what do you mean? I said, well, I'm not going to put you on a plan. And, you know, I don't know what you like, or what foods you like. Here's the reality of the situation. You can put anyone on a meal plan, right? With a set amount of foods. The truth of the matter is if they don't like those foods or they're not available, they're not going to follow the plan anyway, and it's just not going to work, right? Yeah. So you want to try to build a plan around what people like, what they have access to, and that's that's kind of the starting point. And then you can kind of fine tune things as you go along based on how they're responding to that. So interesting, love love that because it is so it is so true, you know. Because people, um, I imagine, you know often are like, well, I don't want to eat that. So therefore they can't yep. adhere to the program. And Agreed. one thing that I've learned, I, I study positive psychology and coaching psychology. And you know, one thing I've learned is Fredrickson's um, uh, upward spiral model. And um, it's really about 
how we can bring positive emotions to behavioral changes. So, mm -hmm. and, and healthy behaviors, right? So, you know, one of which is, you know, if there are some positive emotions around, they get to select, you know, the, the greens that they enjoy, you know, yeah. so therefore there's positive emotions behind the greens that they're eating, and then it becomes more automatic. Um, and, and, and the same is for exercise. And that's what's been one yeah. of my, you know, aha moments for, for me recently has been, um, is just that when there's positive emotions, um, in exercise, people are going to continue to want to do it. And then it becomes unconscious or non-conscious is what they call what they say, Fredrickson says. And then it's, you know, positive emotions beget those positive emotions and it continues to spiral upward, right? And um, you bring up an important point. If you, even with exercise, if you don't choose exercise that you have available to you or that you enjoy, you're just not going to do it. You know, I can tell someone, hey, you know, I need you to do a set of bench presses. I need you to squat. I need you to do this. But if they don't like to perform those movements or have the skill to do them properly, it's not going to happen. Um, yeah. So you want to leverage what they do like. You want to meet them where they are. That's really important. Yeah. Yes. Like those small steps. Yeah, I and agree. So that's a great point. You're absolutely right on that adherence to exercise and and how it is. It's yeah. got to be something that they enjoy, they enjoy, and then also um, making it so that it's not such a daunting task and, um, you know, uh, starting a new exercise program. Yep. Agreed. You know, we talk about the VIA strengths here on this, on uh, Learned It From an 80s song, and that's your 24 strengths that are who you are to your core. And um, you've got an amazing top 10, I have to say, because I've got it right here in front of me. And, and, I, and, I, I, and I, knew, I knew the first one um, before, like, you know, before I saw the virtue of wisdom. And I knew <laughs> that first one, I'm like, wisdom, let me go through this. And uh, sure enough, it's his number one strength, strength is love of learning. And that falls under wisdom. Um, and that was, that was you from a childhood on learning new sports, learning, you know, uh, you know, you're a teacher of physical education, you're inspiring yeah. kids, you're, you're in your business. You're always learning like what we've talked about thus far, best ways to help your clients, yeah. you know, um, what's the healthiest way for that person, individualizing it to who they are. Yeah, I'm still learning. <laughs> it's a, it's really a lifelong process. Um, it never really ends. Um, there's always something new you can learn. I learn from my clients. I learn from my kids. Um, I learn from you know whether I'm reading a book or something on exercise, nutrition. There's always learning happening. So um, I kind of you know I call myself like a sponge. I'm always open to new ideas. You know, I never think that I have the answer because, I mean, when we get to that point where we think we have the answer, then we're not open to any further learning. Really? Yeah. Amazing. And those kids are, by the way, those kids are super lucky to have you. Uh, thank you so much. Teaching them and inspiring them. So that's so, and thank you for, for doing that work <laughs> and, and being a teacher. I mean, there's just, everybody knows, uh, you know, uh, you know, having been with, having two boys of my own and having worked with children in the past, it's, a, you know, it can be challenging at times. Very. And, um, <laughs> and I just want to express my gratitude for the work that you do. Thank you. And then your second one is bravery, which, you know, I really love to see is, is that bravery coming in at number two. And, you know, given the circumstances from, you know, th the past and how you made different decisions, you can see how bravery really spoke uh, to you early on. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, again, it just sometimes you have to exhibit that trait uh, in situations where you may really be fearful. Um, and a lot of us, sometimes we overanalyze the situation um, on whether or not we should remove ourselves or remain in that situation. So it becomes analysis or paralysis rather by analysis. And 
I ultimately had to make a decision that I knew I wanted to eventually break away from that. And you don't know what's on the other side of that decision sometimes, but sometimes you just, you know, you act in faith that, you know, it's going to be okay. I'm going to find a way. Mm -hmm. And that's the mindset I adopted. And, you know, eventually I, I broke away from that situation and started yeah. my own life living a different way than mm -hmm. I knew at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it takes some bravery for me to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then you've got fairness coming in and I know that comes in handy with working with children. Um, they, they, that's a very important, <laughs> that's a very important thing for the kids. They want to, fairness, uh, has to come in there and that's where equal opportunity for everybody. Correct. And, and as you just said, it just, uh, equal opportunity for all the kids, um, you know, not playing favorites, uh, you know, kids are very, very, uh, observant and, you know, they, are always on the lookout for, to see which students are getting preferential treatment and they'll let you know about it yes. <laughs> if they feel that <laughs> even if even if they're you know not correct in their assessment but um yeah just just you know being intentional about um giving all the kids uh the same opportunity is really important yeah yeah really yeah. Fantastic. And I know that comes in handy. Um, yeah. And then you've got hope, which is that optimism. And, and I think that, you know, um, early on having that optimism for you, having that, being able to lean into that strength to be able to, you know, push yourself forward, uh, I imagine was quite important. Yes, it was. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a hopeful person in general. Um, I always am hoping for the best, but always at the same time trying to uh, do the things necessary to bring about the outcome I'm looking for. Um, so even when I was going through adversity um, and that song just kept playing in my head, it gave me a sense of hope that I was going to eventually meet it. Yeah. So that, um, yeah, hope, definitely. I, I am a hopeful person always. And even to this day, I still am hopeful that... Uh, you know, things will ultimately turn out the way I want them to, and that hopefully I will affect the lives of the people I'm working with in a positive way. Well, that's a, that was a, such a good point because I was just thinking, you know, with you and your business and inspiring, you want someone, I, I would want to partner with you having hope in your, your top strengths, knowing that you're optimistic for me and my health journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think and, that's really important also to have, you know, a coach or a mentor that's aligned and, and hopeful as well. Uh, that optimism is really important. Yes, yeah, so good. So good. Well, your clients are lucky to have you and, and thank you. Uh, yes. And uh, humility is that um, is is really modesty. It's mm -hmm. uh, and that I can hear throughout the podcast. You're you know you are um, you. a hugely successful guy and um, very grounded and um, humble about all of your achievements. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean it's just I'll be honest. When I was younger, I would sort of shy away from any <laughs> recognition sometimes. Um, for whatever reason, I just didn't want to draw a whole bunch of attention to myself. Um, it just didn't feel right for me. Um, I mean, I, I, I enjoy uh, succeeding or, or being good at something, but how do I say it? I don't want to necessarily be showered sometimes, <laughs> unfairly so. Just It's just, it just it doesn't feel right for me personally. So. Right, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you've got honesty uh, coming in at six. Uh, and I can hear the honesty and, and how you're, you know, talking with us today in the audience. And uh, judgment is also important. You've got that one coming in. And um, also, you know, you in your business and working with children, you know, you have to make these quick decisions um, that are not biased. Um, right. and, um, and that's where judgment comes in. It's, it's like being able to make a quick decision with, without, uh, having that bias. Correct. And that's not always the easiest thing to do, because as you know, some of the judgments we make, um, could affect people in a way that we didn't intend to, but we make that judgment, um, 
with the idea that we're making a judgment that's best for them and, and all parties involved. Yeah. So that's not always easy because a lot of times folks can misconstrue your judgment for being biased yes. <laughs> or playing favorites or not being fair when in fact you are trying to be fair and equitable. So that's really yeah. important. So great, so great. Um, and then the then you also you've got kindness and uh, you can hear that uh, spirituality, which it sounds like spirituality was also something that helped you early on. You had made a reference to it earlier um, of, of, of divine intervention and what Correct. have you. So you have that sense of also uh, people who have um, spirituality in their top strengths. Um, they uh, also see their purpose. Uh, in the world, like they can look at the uh, look at uh, things more globally about how you're making a difference in the world, that connection to the universe and beyond. Correct. Yeah, and I feel that um, you know my purpose, hopefully, is to help people um, not have to deal with some of the adversity that I did um, to help them live in their best lives, uh, physically, psychologically. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's my purpose as far as I know it right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Could that well, could that potentially through. change? Yeah. It could potentially you know um, change course a little bit, but for the most part, I believe that that's what I'm here for. Absolutely. Absolutely. It doesn't. I hear what you're saying. So you know what you're doing now is is your purpose. Sometimes as we evolve and we learn because love of learning is in your number one. So as you learn more, you're going to want to bring that to help people as well. That can exactly a hundred percent. Yeah, super. Gosh, this has been such a great conversation. And, um, you know, I'd love to hear a little bit about uh, for, you know, an, maybe an action item for our audience um, that you feel strongly about, you know, in your practice now. Um, well, I mean, I always invite people to go to Instagram to follow me, mm -hmm. Official Sean Ruff, as well as my website, www.officialshawnruff.com. Yes. Um, so that would definitely be one of the action action items. I'm also giving away a free 30-day home body weight workout. Uh, they oh, just nice. go to the link in my bio website. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so that's audience, um, you know, you're going to get this in the show notes, a way to connect with Sean, um, to be able to access that 30-day uh, body weight. Um, and, and maybe I'm gonna, I'll let you speak to this. Um, yeah. Often, there is such an importance to weight training. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we know, uh, especially for as we age as women, um, as we age, it's really important. Um, could yeah. you talk a little bit? I think there's this, there's this um, lack of clarity uh, among most people that uh, about body weight versus <laughs> using weights. So uh, body weight versus using weight. So can you talk about how body weight is still beneficial to um, getting in that necessary weight training? Absolutely. So body weight exercise is still resistance training because your your body weight is the resistance. Um, the only difference is um, is that you're not using any machine. So uh, when you're using body weight exercises, there's no there's no learning really that necessarily has to occur in terms of moving a machine or moving a weight a certain way uh, because you're just working with body weight. So. I always recommend that for beginners a lot of times. I tell them, if you can't master your body weight or train with body weight, it's gonna be really hard to progress using the external resistance or loading you with weight. If you can't yeah. move first without anything, that's really yes. important. So, yeah, and that's the way I kind of teach kids also initially. It's like, hey, there's no point in really progressing you to a bench press if you really can't do a push up or that joint action effectively. Really? Yeah, such a good point. So and then I mean, if you think about it, I mean, I mean, for me, push ups are have always been the hardest thing for me. And, um, you know, I, I, therefore, bench presses are also very hard for me. 
<laughs> you know, so I definitely, you know, have to build, continue to build those, the muscles and, okay. and, and the chest. And I, you know, I definitely have no problem modifying, dropping to my knees when I need to, you know, just to make sure I can get the depth of a push up. Um, right. Right. And I, feel and I like yeah, I mean, it's listen, push ups are a fantastic uh, exercise. Um, and there's nothing, body weight training is, is excellent. Um, if done correctly, there, there will be a point uh, when you develop a certain level of strength that you may outgrow your body weight in terms of strength and you may have to load yourself with external resistance. And that's okay. But body weight training is very beneficial. Yeah. So those who are wondering if they can make progress with body weight training, you absolutely can. And there are ways to progress it as well. Yeah. Yes. And I think during the pandemic, we all learned about that. We all learned oh, yeah. like what household items we could use yeah. to work out. <laughs> no cartons, water bottles, whatever. Yes, right. Exactly. Yeah. When there was that weight shortage and cause everybody was. Oh, buying... I, I remember that actually. So funny story. I, I rented a bench and some dumbbells from a facility that was renting it out to people. And I loved it in my car. Yeah. And I said, you know what? I got to find a way to get some resistance training in. And it yeah. worked out for a little bit. It did. Yeah. A hundred. Yeah. So. That I remember that like <laughs> people trying to get a hold of weights because I did some Zoom classes uh, throughout the pandemic. Um, you yeah. know, uh, and, uh, but people's like, I can't get any weights. You know, I said, all right, let's start going around our household, find our, you know, mm -hmm. can soup cans and, you know, whatever we could find, uh, to, yeah. to use. Yeah. And any weights you did find were exorbitant. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was exorbitant because it was such high demand. So. Yeah. 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 Um, and then and how do you find, I mean, I'd just love to hear your take on this. Um, you know, I mean, we're, we're not out of this pandemic, you know, I mean, we, COVID is still here, you know, right. um, but how do you find, um, people transitioning, you know, just from the practice that you've had into, um, you know, now that pe we can go to gyms more comfortably, et cetera, et cetera. How do you find it? Um, I'll be honest. It looks to me like it's, essentially back to normal. I mean, you do have a couple of folks in the gym, you know, that still wear masks. Uh, the majority are, are not wearing masks anymore. So I think we're kind of turning that corner a little bit. Yeah. We're getting back to pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what it looks like to me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's what I see. Uh, and I, and I, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Do you feel that people are kind of doing a hybrid of in-home workouts and gym workouts now that they've kind of set up their homes? I do think that they are. And I do think the thinking is, well, we're not completely out of this. And, you know, who knows, maybe we're not far from being back. So I think that's the mindset that some folks have. And, you know, I think that you're going to see home stuff here to stay. Mm -hmm. As well as online training, I think that that's still going to uh, be around. Online training was around before COVID. Yes. Um, and so it's it's definitely going to be around mm -hmm. during and even after. Just out of the thought, hey, we saw what happened with the gyms. You know, and yes. some people just honestly want to work out within the comfort of their own home if they can get the results that they want. Yes. And then, you know, um, what would be your biggest, you know, piece of advice, um, you know, to those who are starting, you know, a workout plan or starting an eating plan? Like, what would be your best piece of advice for our audience to just get started? Um, definitely make sure you speak to a qualified uh, professional um, and, uh, you know, to work with them, like I said, meeting you where you're at. Um, so what do you have available? What do you have access to? Um, what foods do you like? All of those things are starting points because that's really going to determine whether or not you're going to be able to adhere to whatever plan is created for you. Um, so I think that that's the first, that's the first place to start. Again, what do you have access to? Um, you know, what foods do you like? And your coach can work with you to put together the plan that makes the most sense for you based on what you have available and what your likes and interests may be. 
Awesome. Now, that's great advice. Great advice. Thank you again for that. And thanks for all your expertise. And um, in the show notes, you'll see how to get a, a hold of Sean um, and how to work with him. Uh, one last tidbit before we sign off, um, you know, if I, I know you're a very young guy, but um, if you were to bring back any 80s trends, even though I know some things are coming back, <laughs> especially the 90s, but um, what, uh, what 80s trends would you want to bring back? Oh, man. Sorry, put you on the spot. That's okay. I haven't really considered <laughs> that. Some of the music, to be honest with you, um, I know that a lot of the music is timeless and lives on, but mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you, and maybe this is just a bias, but I feel like music in the 80s and back then was real music. I feel like the artist was so much more best than the talented. That's just, again, that's just yeah. a bias that I have, yeah. right? Speaking yeah. about fairness, but that's a bias that I have that, you know, 80s I music is all time great. It's so great. <laughs> it's just so good. It is. It's just, yeah. and, and I, could, I absolutely am biased. Um, however, I will say um, my kids, actually find that as well they they love it they love to listen to the 80s music or that unfortunately they've had to listen to it because i'd have serious 80s on, <laughs> uh you know in the car 80s on eight um all the time you know driving around la um and uh you know but i know that they they would say the same and i there was just such a freedom i feel like uh within the music too there was just every artist had such different trends and different, oh, yeah. um, different music styles. And there was just such exploration. I felt like it was like exploration yeah. and freedom. Yeah, correct. And just even the outfits that they would come out in the stage fits and stuff were, yeah, they, they were all very original. Like Prince was another one I liked as well. Oh, yeah. Prince was, was great too. So yeah, so just good. a lot of really great artists. Yeah, and great music too. Really great music. Just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> really. I agree. I I agree. Yeah. Um, if we could just bring a little bit of that freedom and that less um, what's the word I'm looking for? Manufactured. Less manufactured. That's a good word. Yes, a hundred percent. More authentic artists. Correct. That's how I would describe it and say that it was more authentic music mm -hmm. then. It's a lot more manufactured now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Such a good point. Well, I just want to thank you again, Sean, for, for being on the show and sharing your story with us today. And, um, and, and thank you. And thanks for all the information you've given us and, and, um, and that perseverance to just beat it, to push through. And, um, and thank you again for being a teacher and inspiring young people to be fit and, um, and inclusive in your fairness and judgment and all of those amazing uh, kindness, all of those amazing uh, characters you bring, uh, uh, characteristics you bring, character strengths you bring to the table. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on your show. Yes. Well, thanks, Sean. And when I'm in LA again, um, I'll, I'll come find you. Awesome. Love it. <laughs> Great to see you and have, a, you have a great, great day. And until next time. All right. See ya. Take care. Bye-bye.